Um, really good one to do. Um, again, really just keeping with some basics of feng shui. Um, I wanted to start some really simple, simple um, ways to start doing feng shui. Just some simple ways to um, start doing feng shui really easily. Very the beginning. Anyway, when I um I I originally came up with the idea to do just this is really what we call feng shui forms, feng shui for the bedroom because when I um, first started doing feng shui, I found it a little bit confusing, and um so what I did was I just broke it down into four different parts of our home, four different things we can look at for different areas. And the bedroom really is very important because it relates to health, the sense of well-being, and our relationships. And it also can relate to procreating, which um, I won't touch on because there's very specific ways to do that for each couple trying to uh, create or uh, conceive a child, but um, so it really does relate to all that. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is really just an easy way to kind of set up your bed in your bedroom so you could try to get a good um, sleep each night. Now, this also actually relates, um, and I've had this several times, I had it recently too, um, where I had someone say, hey, I'm actually not sleeping in my bedroom, but you can actually apply this to another room that you're sleeping in. Um, some people say they don't sleep good in their bedroom, and so they would rather sleep in like a living room or a different area. So the area that you're sleeping in, this is the area you want to focus on. It is best to have a dedicated bedroom, but sometimes due to our personal energy, we're not actually able to sleep in our bedrooms very well. And I mean, that's that's just how it is sometimes. Um, so if you want to, you do want to try to have a dedicated bedroom. I'll keep, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up um, my Facebook comments to see if I'm some doing I'll do Facebook live so I'll open up my Facebook comments to see if I have any questions afterwards because I seem to miss those sometimes um <clears throat> anyway so our relate our bedroom relates to all these things here and you want to try to have a dedicated bedroom that supports you your and your personal energy um so before I forget I'm Candice Verlanga certified feng shui practitioner red river professional with the International Feng Shui Guild and of course the podcast host to the podcast called Learn Feng Shui. And you can find me on all social media's platforms at Learn Feng Shui. I think Instagram is like Learn Feng Shui now because that was not available. And, and so before we start this also, uh, for those newcomers or if you're watching a replay and you're new to learning Feng Shui, there is a difference in the Feng Shui that I'm going to be talking about. A lot of times when people come to Feng Shui, they notice there's different um, schools of thought on it. And so what I want to point out, the biggest difference or like the biggest schools uh, of thought really are Eastern and Western Feng Shui. And so Western Feng Shui, it orients the energy map to the way you enter a space. And so as you enter your front door, this is like a fixed map. If you, as, as you can see here, it says like place the grid over the home lining of the front door. And so when you enter, you know, all these areas are same for each room and for the house. And they all kind of speak to um, a fixed life aspect and kind of go off imagery color and a lot of intent to um, apply feng shui. And it should be different. What I do. Oh. I should be making a graphic too. <laughs> so what happens is that um, traditional or Eastern feng shui, let me see if I deleted that somehow. That's weird. Hmm. It is more Eastern Feng Shui. I'll show y'all energy mapping later. Okay. So, um, orients a map, energy map to the compass direction that your home sits or faces. And it uses the actual um, 
geographical direction to map energy out. And so feng shui is set according to your, also your personal energy and using your Chinese astrology or natal chart. Um, and so with, with the classical or Eastern feng shui, they do not believe that each, um, their energies are universal um, and that they affect everybody differently. Um, and then to the cheer energy of our natural environment. And this is done just on a macro scale of looking at your external features. And really the way your space is set up. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what really is important when we're looking at feng shui? So paint colors, you know, decor, being organized, what do we want to look at when we're doing feng shui from the bedroom? So again, many people have this view of feng shui that they look at a lot of objects or colors or, you know, set what they call like their money corner up, but really feng shui, classical feng shui is a distribution and the ability to receive chi or energy from your natural environment into your home. And of course, even into your bedroom. So um, I've been, I've seen any missing graphics. That's really weird. So um, let me take a look at something real quick. I don't know if something got, because we obviously need, Weird. Oh, that's weird. Some of my graphics seem to have disappeared. That's weird. Um, that's okay. okay. Let's just go on and I'll describe and it'll be in the next one. Okay. So the most, one of the most important things is, um, and your bedroom really is your bed placement. So a bed placement within the space is super important. So bed placement should be, yes, I'm missing a photo. It's weird. I feel like something glitched out in my Canva. I didn't have it saved to my computer. That's okay. So bed placement should be located within the room. Uh, a good location within the room, sorry, uh, facing the door, but not directly head on to the door. So when you're looking at your uh, bed, these are good placements for the bed. See, if this was over here directly facing this door, it's too much energy rushing in. And it's a good place because you can still see the door, but not be directly in line with the door as you're sleeping. So another thing you want to look at or you want to avoid, I suppose, when you're placing your bed is avoid placing your bed directly against a window. Again, the energy outside is too yang for, uh, you know, being conductive to sleep. You're sleeping, your bedroom supposed to be yin or um, a lower calm energy. And so when you place your bed up against this, you have stuff moving behind you, which makes the energy too active for you to be sleeping at night. Oh my goodness, are you serious? That's so weird. Hold on. Oh no. That's so really weird. Hold on, guys. That's so strange. Because I um, just looked at this presentation this morning. Let me just refresh that. I looked at my presentation this morning and I made sure everything was in order. Oh, look, it's in order. I just need to refresh it. Okay, here we go. Let's start back at this one. Okay. Oh, the plight of... Um, Modern pathology. All right. Sometimes it doesn't work the way you want it to. Okay. So it's working now. Cool. Cool. So again, here's the really good um, examples of placements of bed that you don't want to do. So again, facing the door head on. You don't want to be like right there against that door. This one's actually okay. I'm not sure why that one's included. Um, this one. Again, you don't want to be right by the door. And you should avoid putting your bed at angles. You want your bed up against a solid wall when you're sleeping. And this one we'll talk about in a second. Okay, so here's what we do want. Here's the windows. Okay, so here's with pictures. So bed placement should be located within the room in a good location, which also avoids placing your bed under ceiling beams. And it looks like this is the door right here. So you're getting the energy from the door right here. You got your bathroom right there and you got your ceiling beams right there and you have a mirror face in the bed. I would not sleep in this room and I don't think that anybody who slept in this room would probably sleep very well. Um, sometimes if you sleep in a hotel and you have to sleep like that, 
Um, I've heard that temporary energy doesn't affect you as much. And also, this is a really tough one. Um, one of the things, so this is a little bit of a, um, a form uh, violation here because it is directly under a beam. But one of the things that I've learned is placing your bed between two windows is also a no, no. So um, if you had the choice, and you had to place the bed somewhere in the room. I mean, do you better placing it by this window here, even though it's not the best, but between two windows actually is said to cause depression because um, a lot of things that the Chinese look at when they look at um, they, they, some things can get a little superstitious. So apparently one of the characters, like they're really big in homonyms and homonyms are a word that sounds like something that um, you know means something else. So for example, they don't like the number four because it sounds like the word death. And so they, they don't like the number four and, or they don't like, I think it was clocks because um, it also, it, it's some sort of, um, uh, the character looks the same as something negative. And so for this, it's said that the character is supposed to um, mimic the character of that of sadness or crying. And so it's said that placing your bed between two windows can cause depression. Um, I don't know, but I do have this in my room and I did move our bed over because I felt like it would be better off on a solid wall. Completely solid. So I'll leave that up to you. And if you do have this, I would try positioning your bed in a better position. Okay. So even though it may seem practical to do not place items overhead. So we're going into the season where students are going to start moving into dorms and maybe we want to help them get their feng shui set up so they can, um, you know, sleep good or they can have a positive flow in their space. And uh, dorm rooms are really hard. And that's where you see a lot of this stuff. You'll see um, overhead shelves like this. And they're high, but not over your bed when you're sleeping. You want to put it maybe off to the side. This one, I, so I saw this, something like this um, for sale at one of the local department stores a few years ago. And I thought, oh my gosh, that I have to put a picture of that. Every time I do a bedroom um, feng shui, I always include a picture like this because they sell this and it's supposed to be for like, it's marketed, it's like a dorm room and they sell it to go in a space that is smaller. And although it does have additional, you know, storage to it, Mm, you're still oppressing the flow of chi overhead while you're sleeping, just like with the ceiling beams. So, and not only that, like that doesn't even look sturdy. I'd be afraid that fall on my head. Okay. So what about drains and pipes behind the bed? And so I've heard some different things on this. You may have heard something different. I'm always open to, um, to wondering. I've heard mixed things. Um, some masters say that if you have drains behind your bed, it's not good. And some say, only if the water is constantly draining behind you, like say it's some sort of um, water drainage that's coming behind your your head when you're sleeping. Now that can be very problematic. But as far as just regular drains behind you, um, I I tend to believe that um, if they're just regular drains, they're not being used all the time, except when the water is running, then I do not think they cause a problem. Said, let's, let's look at water. So water in our bedroom, okay? <clears throat> Again, what we want to do when we're sleeping is have a very calming, peaceful environment for us to feel relaxed in. And water in feng shui is a yang element. It's a moving element. It's um, active. And so it's constantly moving. And for this reason, you should not place. Uh, oh, I meant to put shouldn't. I have a typo there. Shouldn't place water features in the bedroom. This includes um, water features that are a really amount of water. If you do like the sound of water in your room, I still wouldn't suggest it, but a little tabletop fountain or a picture of water. I don't believe adds water to the space. Some people do say different. Um, you just want to avoid fish tanks. I've seen people put fish tanks in kids' rooms, and water is an activator and holder of chi. So again, feng shui comes from the um, the words or the saying. You know, um, uh, chi is scattered by the wind and gathers at the boundaries of water. And for that reason, 
uh, water is usually used as an activator or holder of chi. If I'm doing a feng shui activation, sometimes I'll put out water, just kind of depending where the space is. I have an aquarium that I'll use sometimes. And an aquarium, um, some say covered, it doesn't. Again, I don't know, but I would still tend to keep an aquarium out of a room. So important considerations also include a solid sturdy headboard. It's attached to your bed because this is actually what activates your bed. And um, so this is a fun fact. If you use date selection, um, you can do a bed placement. And there's actually one coming up, I think on, I don't have my days written down. I think on Thursday and Friday, I believe. So we got our kids new beds the other day. And um, we got our kids new beds the other day. And um, I'm going to wait and I'm going to put them together a Thursday, one, one's together Thursday and one's together Friday. Because a Thursday and Friday are this week are actually good days to um, place your feng shui, to set your feng shui especially um thursday thursday is what's called a danger day and danger days generally um are good for doing bed placement okay so sometimes we just have limited options when we're sleeping and we're in our bedroom um and you may have to put your bed up against a wall so what can you do to make your space still feel better and one thing i would do um and i have recommended for people who have limited space and they have to place their bed up against that window is to use some heavy heavy drapery and room darkening panels and i know there's some even that block out sound so I, I to me i feel like if you have a room that is on a more um it's either facing the back of the house or your room it looks out to maybe the side of your home where it's not active um, i would say it's okay if you have to place your bed up against the window but place some heavy draperies and room darkening panels again privacy screens it can read they're excellent for redirect and flow um you can place a privacy screen or like a heavy board or something uh, by that window to kind of block out that window if you have to do that so what are some feng shui myths with your bedroom? Um, I love to do these because I feel like a lot of people um, have, of course, that superstition of feng shui, and they talk about placing items out. When really remember, guys, that that feng shui is the collection and distribution of chi flow. Okay, so a mirror. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I actually do believe that mirrors have um, the ability to, uh, I guess um not really hold chi but i think they do have an ability i know they say you know of course back in the days they used to cover mirrors in bedrooms and i think that's a really good practice so a mirror should not be reflecting your bed um but the myth is that the mirror reflecting your bed means you're inviting a third person into your bed i don't personally believe this i know some people that have said it's true um but what you do want to look at is that the mirror is reflecting if it's reflecting sunlight and the sunlight is again very a very yang energy an active energy and if your um it's reflecting sunlight onto your bed if it's reflecting the window and it's bouncing onto your bed and the mirror then you can have a restless night's sleep. And so just cover your mirror. If you can keep it covered before bed and you want to keep a mirror in your room, that's fine. Um, I would avoid having two mirrors facing each other because I have heard that creates um, a sort of portal <laughs> and we definitely don't want that in our home. Um, yeah, so mirrors, although, um, again, I think it, that's a myth that having a mirror reflect your bed, I don't think that's true. Um, but I do think it can lead to a restless night's sleep. Because the sun is reflected into it. Okay. <clears throat> colors. Um, now, I wanted to talk about colors because it's one of the things that people ask about the most. People love to know about color and feng shui. And so, to me, I feel like um, when you're looking at color and feng shui, it has a very minimal impact. It's almost like the last resort and uh, in, in some cases, okay? And so what I would like to tell people is to use color psychology when they um, pick a color for their bedroom. I have another typo in there. I swear I proofread stuff and I don't know what it is. I do feel like I'm a little bit um, 
like d dyslexic a little bit sometimes because I swore I'll read stuff like three times and I'll still find typos when I read it again because <laughs> I've done this presentation like twice. <laughs> so I've never seen that typo. Uh, when you pick a color for your bedroom. Uh, so um, keep your colors calm and muted. And I will say if you're adding a large amount of color to a space, like if you're painting a whole room black, then your room is going to be very, very heavy in a, a water element. And so although I don't, um, use fun, uh, colors in feng shui to correct the chi of a space because I don't feel like it has a chi flow. Um, I do feel like color still has an impact on the way it makes you feel. Um, so I tell the story all the time, but I was on this some, I don't know what it was. It was some Facebook group. Um, and usually of all the masters I follow, they're great, right? But I come across this post and it was a, some, I don't know who it was, but this person was like, um, I instructed, you know, this person to paint their room red and add triangles all to it because they're low on the element of fire. And a guy, believe me when I say it was like the ugliest thing I had ever seen. It was bright red with ugly triangles in it. And I was like, please don't, don't do that to your room because you're not going to feel comfortable in your room. And in fact, if, uh, to me, I feel like if a feng shui um, pr practitioner tells you to rely heavily on the use of color, that they're missing out on understanding the flow of chi in your space. And remember, the flow really comes from the way you position your bed. Um, that's one of the, the most important things, okay? So one of the things you can do is look at the elements of color, you know, um, what they represent. And so fire. Um, it represents a spirituality, inspiration, and attention. I don't think I'd probably use this for a bedroom, not for a main color, but I would definitely, you can definitely put pops of color in um, that are red, especially that when you want to add to like the sensual feel of it, it adds a nice um, sensual feel. And so red, oranges, hot pinks, and bright, vibrant colors um, are, uh, represent that element of, of fire and um, this right here. So wood, it represents growth, learning, and connecting, and the colors that represent it are deep um, and light greens and light purples. You can begin to think of like, like a woody kind of color, like that. Uh -huh. Here. If you want to look at the element of earth and think of like stability, steadiness, cultivation, um, you can add colors like yellow, beige, brown, light peachy pinks, and gold. Um, for water, which represents uh, movement and wisdom, you can add um, your blues, your purples, and your blacks. For metal, which represents creativity, execution, decision making, organization, and communication. You can add colors like, so it's a, a metallic color, so like gray, which I forgot to put here. You could do grays, whites, satiny colors, iridescence, metallic, shiny, holographic, and these are super fun. Oh, and even rainbow colors, like, this is like iridescent, so rainbows. One thing you can do to make your room a little bit more relaxing is add some um, smells. So add some good smell to it. Um, I really think that um, I love the smell of roses. And so roses, and I like the way it smells in my, in my room. And to me, it's very, um, like, relaxing. And, like, it's it, to me, anything that has, like, that rose uh, like a rose quartz or like a rose scent to me it's it does represent that partnership and that that um that love and so to me of course when i put that in my room i think of connecting with my husband and so um things like scented candles oil diffusers wax warmers um you know the warmers with the light uh, i always tell people to be careful of candles so i don't say candles but you can um and stress reducing scents like lavender lemon rose bergamot and orange those are all set to reduce stress and of course um i like i said i recommend rose just because i think it's very sensual and i think it's um just really really lovely to put in a bedroom Okay, so one other thing. So this isn't really feng shui. This is more of like the psychological part of it, but it helps you feel a little bit more relaxed. And so if you do this, I would encourage you to um, take the family photos out of your room. You don't need a 
relative's wall display of your entire family. You don't need family photos in your room. If you want a family photo, I would suggest one of you and your partner. Um, but um, I know they say you can include also paired items to represent partnership. Again, not really feng shui, but more of a visual representation or a reminder of your goal with your bedroom. And if you're single, you can also do this to, um, you know, to attract and bring in and think about um, get you know, having a partner. And also bed placement will be looked at according to your um just some different things but bed placement is looked at if you want to attract a partner or you want to bring harmony to a relationship and sometimes you are limited by your forms within the space and so you don't want to violate the forms and put your bed up against a window or you know those type of things um, in order to achieve that but um, so sometimes we're limited in that way. And if we are, sometimes we can just include those items that remind us that of our goals in our, you know, in that space, which really are about um, relationships. Especially your intimate relationship. So remove your family photos because you don't need to see those as you make it. And so this is another thing, thing that I would like to discuss too. Again, not, uh, actually this is part of feng shui because altar placement and altars do have a certain um, placement in feng shui. And um, you shouldn't put them in your bedroom. They represent the element of fire and um, it, it is just too much for your space. Um, so an altar space shouldn't be in your bedroom. <laughs> and pictures of deities and statues should also be kept out of your bedroom. So again, there's another ADHD typo guys. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, just keep deities out of your room. They don't really have a space. Um, there's altar placement. Um, if you guys want, I could do a short class on altar placement. Let me make sure I don't have any comments or questions. Let me look. I don't think I have any comments. I'm not hanging from you live. So, um, be kept out of your bedroom. If you have any questions, please message me. Um, you can just comment. If you are watching this through Facebook Live, go ahead and comment. If you watch the replay, comment. Um, I do offer free energy mapping of your space. And again, that looks kind of like this. Um, let's see here. It looks a bit like this. So what happens is we take a um, this is just laid over your floor plan from here. It looks like this. And I talked to you about what kind of elements each space is. I talked to you about um, the energy of your home. And you, we just go from there and you can talk about some of your feng shui goals. And there's no charge for that. I always um, offer that for new clients. Let's see, or new, new, uh, you know, watchers, new subscribers, listeners of the podcast, whatever. And so if you are interested in that, um, message me for a discovery call for energy mapping of your space. And that can be done by going to the website at funchoybycandice.com. And at the top, I do have a download and it kind of talks a little bit about the four, I think maybe five areas in feng shui um that i'm going through these next few months and so next month is going to be feng shui for your office um, and so that'll be a good one let's see here let me okay so feng shui for your office that should be a good one we're going to go over like desk placement um probably a few tips on like seeing uh, the clutter in your space. Um, so just some really simple ways to start with feng shui for your office. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to register. Um, I felt like I was a little bit lazy this past month. I just got back from vacation and I'm telling you, uh, when I tell you I took a nap right before class today because um, we just went so hard on vacation. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> um, so I feel like I've slacked a little bit on trying to get people into the class. So if you watch the replay of this, um, welcome and I uh, hope you learn something today. So again, sign up. I'll have an event on the Learn Feng Shui page. You just go register. We can, you can join me live for um, Feng Shui for your office. I'm gonna look real quick and make sure I don't have any, um, I don't know if I have any questions on, 
live video on Facebook if you are. Questions. So if you guys watch the replay and you um, have any questions, please just either comment below, shoot me a message, and we can talk. Uh, especially if you have any questions about your bed placement in your bedroom. So if you don't have any questions, I'll close this out and I'll catch you guys um, next month for feng shui for your office. Bye. You guys have a great day.